Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Thursday Theorist. Finally, we are back after an extended break. What's it been? Two months? Uh, Women of Horror Month was February. That's when I did Tabitha King's uh, Small World. So, and it's April. Wow. No wonder you guys are blowing me up. Anyways, uh, and by blowing me up, I mean commenting, Hey, what day? Hey, when's the next Thursday Theorist? When's the next Thursday Theorist? It's coming, y'all. I gotta read these books again. I don't remember anything about them. And I'm glad I reread this one, because had I not, I wouldn't have gotten any of this stuff, because some of the stuff that I found isn't on the wiki and rada rada. Anywho, but today, we are talking about Regulators by Richard Bachman. Yes, Richard Bachman, not Stephen King. Uh, same person. I know, I know, same person. Calm you, calm you chest me. But anyways, um, so I put up my review for this one yesterday. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link down in the doobly-doo. And if I can remember, I will leave a uh, end card at the end of this video. So as far as the regulators and desperation are concerned, they are considered twinners in the Stephen King universe. And a twinner is the same person, just different maybe uh, life, maybe character development, that kind of, de that kind of deal. Um, they are the same person. They are uh, somewhat connected, but only by like their appearance, maybe their blood type, that, that kind of thing. But usually their characters are completely different other than maybe their, the, their strongest character trait. Like maybe if they're an artist or an author. Like in this one, um, one of the characters is a children's author where I believe in Desperation he was either a thriller author or romance author. I can't remember. Fuss at me. Down there in the doobly-doo. Um, but anyways, uh, these two books, again, just in case, I mean I've done this several times, but just in case you don't know, you special viewer who, who are watching this, let me, let me frame this up right. These two books go together like this. So, the way I'm looking at it, if they intended it to be like this, they both came out on the same day. If they intended it to be like this, maybe the Regulators comes first in the overarching universe. I don't see how it could, um, because you're going to be a pain in the butt, ain't you? De yeah, desperation is a butthole. But uh, I, don't, I don't see how, because there is more of a conclusion to the story as an entirety, I suppose, in this one. Isn't there? I mean, isn't... Okay, spoilers. There's going to be spoilers for this, it, and Desperation. Tack is destroyed in this one. Isn't he? Maybe not. I don't know. We don't ever find out. I mean, he goes inside of, uh, of Cammy and explodes her brain meat, but which is something I'm going to bring up also. And I might as well just go ahead and go into it. Let's stop talking about the Dark Tower connections and the Universe connections. Okay, so Tack and Pennywise have got to be, if not the same uh, species, they have to be on the same level of the tower kind of deal, right? Um, because Tack is a Wyson. Um, I don't know that we've ever found out what Pennywise is, but I'm almost fighting for the, uh, the, the idea that these creatures are nothing more than their lights. Uh, you have the Wyson, which is Tack. Tack is a Wyson. That's his species. Um, you have Tack as uh, red lights, and then you have uh, Pennywise, and spoilers for it, uh, Pennywise as white lights or dead lights. He has the bright white lights, and then you have the Wyson has the red lights. And there are, there are connecting tissues for all of these creatures. You have Tack, who um, is... Oddly enough, referred to as Tack the Outsider in a Stephen King desk calendar at one point in time. Oh, um, which I guess kind of spoilers for The Outsider too. But um, you have uh, Pennywise who who shape shifts and can get in, who feeds off fear. I almost said get into people's minds. Not really. I mean, he kind of goes into Henry Bowers a little bit, but it's more of a persuasion. So maybe Pennywise isn't as strong as his home dude Tack. Who knows? Um, and then you have Tack himself, who who can go into people and who can lock them away in their own minds. Mr. Gray, anybody? Is there a you know anybody? Come on! I mean, these these connections are pretty obvious at this point. I had someone try to tell me that there was no way that uh, that uh, the Grays were connected to Pennywise or anything else. They were just aliens. 
No, I mean, they do the same things. So, and whether or not they're coming from outer space or they're coming through a thinny or they're coming through doors, their damn selves, who knows? But that's my connection to, to the universe is there and it, it connects most of my stuff. Some subtle references to the Dark Tower. There is a mention of someone going off the beam, um, which is in Misery and several other books. I think it's in Dolores Claiborne. Um, I know it's in the Gerald's Game movie, which is cool, and I think it's in Gerald's Game also. I'd have to go back and check. Um, but the mention of off the beam pops up every now and again when someone is crazy, they're off the beam in the Stephen King universe. I thought that little aspect was cool. Also, this story happens, um, I, I think it's on Poplar Street, but it's right next to Bear Street. Um, let, let, me, let me look this up before someone down it, it, before someone down in the comments goes, Hey, E, no, it happens on Hootie Wetsit Street. Yeah, it's uh, Bear Street crosses uh, and so is Hyacinth. Am I saying that right? Hyacinth? I don't know. Um, but it all happens on Poplar Street. But there is a Bear Street and there's a Bear Street Woods and you have the, you know, the, the beam of the bear. You also have the, the connection, which is kind of loose. Don't at me kind of loose because you have uh, Shattuck, what's it, Shardick, sorry, Shardick, um, in at the beginning of the Wastelands, and he's a bear with a, what's he got on his head? And what's these vans got on a satellite dish, right? Or communication disc, whatever you want to call it. I know it seems, I know it seems uh, to be far-fetched, but think about it this way. Think of the uh, ending of Wolves of the Kala. Think of the wolves. Think about the mishmash of Doctor Doom, Harry Potter, all that stuff that is mashed together that's just a jumble of all these stories told over time. What if Shardick, what if that's connected to the Vans and to Bear Street? What if that is an allusion to all of that? I think that would be rad as hell. Another thing that I want to bring up that I didn't catch myself, um, that I'm still not entirely, entirely convinced of, and I got my notes over here, but, uh, the regulators, or can toy, um, who serve the crimson, regulators are can toy, who serve the crimson king, and the big coffin hunters from, uh, Wizarding Glass were sometimes called regulators. Now, this is on the StephenKing.com. This isn't fan connections. This is actually on the Dark Tower connections on StephenKing.com that mentions that the regulators are can toy, and the big coffin hunters were regulators. Given how the regulators ends, do you think there's any chance that maybe the ghosts of the big coffin hunters are what are powering or maybe the the extended mind of of Tack? I don't I don't know, man. There's 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 so many possibilities. And I would love to hear from you guys about that down there in the doobly doo. Let's have a conversation about that one especially. The big coffin hunters being the regulators. Um now, as far as the entities, ta the entity of TAC in Desperation and in the, the Regulators, first off, TAC is a wholly underrated villain. He's one of the best, best monsters in all of Stephen King's lore. <clears throat> At least I feel this way, and several people have brought it up um, on my Regulators review that um, that TAC is a good one. At least, At least two people, I know. Um, so maybe I'm inflating that by saying several people, but I apologize. <laughs> Anyways, so, but you have this entity, Tack, who in, the, in desperation, he would completely erase the person that he took over. Um, he, he takes over the, uh, what is it, the Carver mother, um, this is, what's her name, Mary? Because in this one, she's Ellen. I can't remember if it's the same or not. I think the, uh, the mother and daughter actually switch names and places. So the daughter becomes the mother, uh, because the mother's name is Pi in this one. Whereas Pi, the sister, dies at the beginning of Desperation. Um, you have, uh... You, you, and then it, Kali and Trajan, I mean, there's nothing left of Kali in there, and, and I was thinking about why. Um, now, Seth Garen, uh, the little boy who Seth is inside of in Regulators, is autistic. He's, he's what is called Hollywood autistic, because he's a genius, and he, you know, saves the day with his genius. So, it's when writers, or, well, just writers, because writers work on movies, too. Writers take an uh, autistic person, make them, what, what was it, what did it used to be called, an idiot savant? 
Um, and this is pretty much what's happening here. They're contained in that brain space. Um, so I'm wondering if it's because Seth Garen was so powerful himself as an aut autistic uh, a telepath or however it's explained. And I'm wondering if, if Seth had some of these powers, like maybe he, would, maybe he has a touch of the shine and that's why Tack was able to reach out to him so far as he was traveling through. Maybe that's also why he was able to piggyback on him instead of just explode his damn head like everybody else. Because you have the homeless guy with the shopping cart that's stuck to the cactus, which is an amazing scene. Uh, an amazing visual in this book. You have that uh, and the eyes pop out of the head, uh, whereas in desperation, uh, just the body starts failing. Um, just minute things that normally wouldn't harm a human being, when Tack takes over the body, just completely destroys and decimates the human body. But in this one, it causes a pressure that pops the eyes out of their heads, which is a great, great visual. Because uh, you have Peter Jackson, it happens to, you have the homeless guy with the shopping cart, and then you have uh, Cammy Reed at the end with her head exploding, which is an amazing, amazing visual also. Um, also, I talked yesterday about the ending being bleak, and it's setting it in the Richard Bachman universe. Um, I can't remember right now, and I probably could research it, uh, probably j just go look, but um, in my top five Stephen King books that should have been Bachman books, I, I can't remember if I put Cujo on there at all, but at the end of Cujo, spoilers for Cujo, uh, I'll give you a second to click away or pause because I'm going to say it pretty quick after this, so if you haven't read Cujo, Pause, click away, that kind of thing. Maybe scrub forward a little bit. The little, the the little boy at the end, Tad, he dies. In this one, again, spoilers. <laughs> if you haven't been warned enough, uh, Seth has Cammy Reed. Um, well, Seth forces Cammy Reed to shoot hi him and Audrey. Uh, to have a little boy shot in the head and it be so gruesome, the b brains blew out his head and everything, um, that's definitely, that, I think that anchors, I, I was on the fence whether or not this was a Bachman book in at, at heart, but I think that kind of anchors it right there, uh, ha having that kind of murder of a child. Um, another thing that backs up my thought that there's a shine to... Uh, there, there's a shine or a t telepathic power to Seth without Tack. Is Tack isn't inside Seth anymore when Seth tell forces Cammy to shoot him. So, yeah, it's it. I, I don't know. Maybe you guys want to discuss it down there. That, that's one of the things that I love about this series is some of the the stuff that we have we have done together as a community, and I want to keep that up. So again, if I haven't. Uh, if I haven't caught everything, if you guys want to mention something, I don't care if you search for it or, you know, whatever. If it's your own, if you're your own, fine. I would like to know if you found it yourself. But let me know down there if you guys find anything that I did not mention in this video. And, of course, Patrick, I expect you to fact check me like you have on the other videos, my friend. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Thursday Theorist Review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!